All right, so it shows that I'm live. Let me get right into this. First of all, let me also mute me so that you don't hear me looping back to myself, something I did earlier today and failed to do right. Um, for, Hank, thanks everybody for tuning in. Um, let me start by with a little till deer what this isn't going to be. This is not a walkthrough of everything that's ever happened in the history of the ACA. Uh, it's not a so-and-so is a lying, lazy fraud, and I'm glad they left message. It's not a rehash of issues from years ago. It's not a nuclear bomb that shits all over the ACA. Uh, my health is fine and improving. Uh, there won't be any questions or super chats or monetization. This has been an incredibly difficult week for me, and this isn't an easy statement to make, but 17 years deserves more than just I'm done. Uh, I'm not stopping. I'm just not working with the ACA anymore. And if you don't care about the story, that's cool. I get it. Head on out. This is my take on events over the past year. I'm not putting up screenshots, though I have them, and I'm not mentioning names. I'm not going to show you any emails because while I saved them and while I'm still a life member of the ACA, I, although I guess they probably revoked it now, they've disabled my email address so that I no longer have e access to those emails. Uh, so I'm, I'll be paraphrasing things. I haven't at this point told the organization anything other than my announcement, um, and they haven't spoken to me. In the old days, the Atheist Community of Austin was entirely volunteer run. It was an organization uh, that grew to the point where we had to add an employee. We own a building. I say we. I'm going to stop saying we as soon as I get used to it. And there's more than we could rely on for volunteers. You cannot count on volunteers exclusively with this much work to do to manage a building and programs. Now the ACA is up to about five employees, and I would say that two or three of them are absolutely necessary. And the rest, I have differing opinions on how valuable their roles are. Uh, but this past weekend, um, I've never felt more unwelcome, less respected, and less valued in my entire time in, with the ACA. I have no more confidence in the organization's leadership. I'm not telling anyone to not support them. Support me. Support them. Support both. Support neither. My co-hosts uh, are amazing. There are tons of volunteers producing content for them. They are all wonderful, and they are all caring about the mission. Here's the backstory. Last November, we... The ACA implemented a policy that prevented any member of production from serving on the board. I resigned from the board on that day because it was pointless to keep going for a month and pointed out the problems I had with this policy. I mentioned that there was no plan to replace any of us and that a policy like this should wait if it should be implemented at all. The concern was a circular reporting structure for employees. Production answers to the board and the production people answer to the, or sorry, Employees answered the board and production staff answered the production employees. And so there could have been a circle where some of us were on the board and we were in production. And so the employees were in this loop between. Now, um, the issue of whether or not someone like me would have less control as a board member than as a person just engaging uh, in, in content creation uh, is debatable. But just being a board member doesn't mean that you have control. There's already methods in place. Employees can go to the board and say, hey, this person in production is trying to get me to do something, and they're flaunting the fact that they're on a board. Um, and then the board should take action against that person. And similarly, if any employee is told by a board member to do something, their response should be, once you get approval from the board, and I get that as a direction from the board rather than just a member of the board, I'll do it. There's no real conflict here, but they weren't listening. It's all lawyers and nonprofit experts dictating policy with no regard to the fact that this organization is unlike any other nonprofit you're likely to find. I'm not aware of any other profit, uh, other nonprofit that has media production as its primary foundation with public figures as the face of the organization while somebody else makes the decision. The board of directors went from nine down to six and then down to five and then they replaced one. Ten months later, as far as I know, the board, member, the board of directors is still at six uh, they've added a director of communications, but the website isn't uh, being updated all that much. There was an update on August 16th announcing the end of month show. There was another, there wasn't one announcing for September. Uh, there was not enough stuff about the bat cruise. Uh, I don't feel that I know what's going on. And I was the first president after the ACA changed its bylaws. Prior to that, we had co-chairs. They were the people that ran it. So I wasn't the first person to run the organization, just first president after a bylaw change. That brings a dedication to the organization and a duty to protect it, even if I take a personal hit. And I lived that for 17 years. Anytime anything would happen, I got attacked. Didn't matter if I was in charge of anything or not. I wasn't on the board during the kerfuffle and I took no action without direct approval from the president and vice president at the time, yet I got attacked as part of the primary problem, a part of or as the primary problem. I specifically left the board 
so that there wouldn't be any undue influence for me. I wasn't trying to control everything. When I stopped being president, I stayed away from all of it. There have been several presidents in between. I didn't want to influence people in their decision-making about this. I've never taken a penny from the atheist community of Austin, have donated my time and money to the organization, uh, a lot of it, uh, to the point of risking my reputation and my health in order to keep the ACA on mission, because that was the important thing. I didn't even monetize my personal YouTube channel until this stuff started happening in June. This, this channel you're watching right now wasn't even monetized until after the events I'm going to describe started happening. Uh, I did that for credibility so that people would be like, oh, Matt's just in it for money. But it didn't keep people from accusing me of being a control monger who's using the ACA as a bank account. Um, I've given up money that I could have easily made by monetizing this channel. And that's changed now. This channel is now monetized. The organization never defended me against any of these accusations. And that was largely okay because it's just one of the unfortunate side effects of being the public face of the organization. And I was willing to take it to protect the ACA and the mission. I've had people attempt to blackmail me. I've had people attempt to get me removed. They've attacked me. They've attacked my partners. Uh, they've made it personal, all sorts of things. That won't happen anymore. I don't have to sacrifice my own uh, reputation to help an organization. So let me tell you a story. An organization has is producing media and they have a, something happen and it's a problem. It's not a huge problem, but it's a problem. And so they investigate and then they apologize publicly, and then they change policies to make sure it doesn't happen again, and we all move on doing better. That's what we would expect from any organization, and some would say that that is what happened recently with the Atheist Community of Austin. But that's not what happened. That's the public-facing actions of what happened, and it doesn't match what happened behind the scenes, just like the nice message that they posted about me the other day leaving doesn't match them not talking to me and disabling my email account and other things. I'm going to go through the timeline of this as quickly as I can. An incident occurs on Truth Wanted, which causes a problem in the after show Discord. The Discord sends out an apology. One of our hosts objects to the, apolog to, to the apo apology, as do I. And then I wind up in a three-hour meeting with some board members and production staff pointing out that we need to do more and that we need to be proactive and apologize, that we can't risk... Uh, our reputation being damaged with the LGBTQIA community. I then got volunteered for a core values group, which in some, some sort of corporate make work bullshit that addressed nothing. On June 6th, I had a meeting with production. We had a good talk about the issues and we're optimistic about things getting better. Uh, and then a board member replied to me and my core values email with an incredibly problematic and tone deaf message uh, which I was later told was perfectly acceptable and factual and there was nothing wrong with it uh, by the people in charge. Despite it asking questions like, do we have to hunt down every trans person who has a problem with us? And should they all get a say in our policies? I'm paraphrasing because they removed my access to that email account. And I don't want to dig up the copies that I had elsewhere. On June 7th, I typed up a response to that email, but I didn't send it because I wanted to try to keep working with the organization. Uh, I typed up two emails then, one that gave the backstory that led up to the problem on Truth Wanted. Um, and another one was about just general transphobia, public perception, and how it was important for us to apologize. Those last two emails have still never been answered at all. And now I'll never know if they are going to. They won't be. On June 10th, after three days of waiting, I asked if those emails had been received because I hadn't gotten an answer. And I was told that they had been and that they would be posting something that addressed them. On June 10th, they posted an ACA, AC Discord working together document, which is a perfectly fine after action report that went over what happened, what was, went wrong and how they would go about fixing it. But it also focused almost exclusively on the relationship between the Atheist Community of Austin and the Discord. It didn't focus on the relationship with the LGBTQIA plus community at all. That relationship wasn't mentioned. This gave a problematic impression that they cared more about their relationship with the Discord than they did with the community. I'm not saying that's true. I'm saying that's the impression that it gave. And warning them about the consequences of giving that impression was the goal. That document also specifically stated that, you know, hey, we're not looking to place blame. There's no responsibility here, no apology. Let's just work better. At this point, I forwarded the reply that I hadn't sent to the other problematic email. And as the policy doc did not actually address my emails, I sent an email to the board saying that I would be withdrawing from on-screen work until my concerns were addressed. This was June 12th. Uh, my concerns were twofold, the communication problems with the board 
and the apology for what happened. Without that apology, I was going to threaten to quit the organization. Uh, two days later, they had a board meeting. I wasn't invited. I wasn't invited to discuss anything. Um, on the 16th, they released an apology in email. Some would claim that this apology was coming the whole time, but I had no way to know that. Uh, I called the director to ask where we were publishing the apology, and they asked me, what do you mean? And so I, I asked again. It was I was dumbfounded that somebody would ask, you know, what, what do you mean, where are we publishing it? And their response is, it's already been published. And I asked them where, and they said, on the website. And I asked if that's all we were doing, and they noted that they'd send it in an email to me and others. This prompted an argument where it was clear that they didn't understand my issues and wasn't familiar with the email exchange that I'd had, uh, though they had been copied on it. I told them that we needed to read and promote the apology on at least Truth Wanted. That's very important. That's all we wanted. We already They already wrote an apology. They put it on the website. I just wanted to make sure we addressed it on Truth Wanted. No, I can't slow down. I got stuff to do. Um, I spent an hour or so on the phone with leadership and thought we'd come to an understanding and I headed off to a movie. Uh, during that call, I mentioned that the board isn't communicating well, that nobody knows what's going on, that they don't commit to things publicly. They don't acknowledge things publicly, that the email that I got from that was problematic almost made me quit. And after talking about all this, I, um, I was told that they hadn't even read that email. And I'm like, how can you think you've addressed my concerns when you haven't even read the emails that were the problem six days after I sent them? 15 minutes before the movie started, I got a text message or a message, an email, I think, that read, thanks so much for talking with me today. I want to get back to you today regarding your interest in having the board statement read at the beginning of Truth Wanted. Given the positive response we've received from the stakeholders involved, we feel our existing course of action is effectively addressing your concerns. After much discussion among the leadership, production staff, and stakeholders, we have determined that reading the statement at the beginning of the show is neither warranted nor advisable. Now, I was sitting here saying, this is important. We should apologize. We should make it public. This is a win-win scenario. Nothing bad can happen from being better and apologizing. But they wanted to put it up on a website, and they didn't think it was advisable to talk about it. A website that people don't know about, what weren't addressing. So I asked if that was their final decision, uh, given that I had threatened to quit. And what I got back was, you know, I said, hey, I just got to this movie. Uh, is this the final decision? And the text message I got back was, oh crap, try to enjoy the movie. And that's the last message I ever got about this uh, until the next day when a different person messaged to let me know that it was the final decision. I sent an email and a message requesting to know who these stakeholders, leadership and production were because I'd been talking to people who I thought um, were, were valuable and, and essential stakeholders for this. And of course they wouldn't tell me, that's, that's corporate kind of typical stuff. And I understand why they're not naming names, but I needed to find out what the policies were. I was sitting here saying, I'm the producer and the main host of the Atheist Experience. If this is something that had happened on AXP, would I be considered a stakeholder? Would I be considered production staff for that? Would I be involved in this decision? Because the people I took talked to were all in favor of reading the apology, and most of them hadn't been consulted. Nobody that I talked to had been consulted. Um, and then I asked, what would happen if I were to go on Atheist Experience and read hey, we just posted this apology on the website. I don't understand um, how that could be problematic, but um, I let them know that I'd be staying, but we had some stuff to work on. On June 19th, after deciding to stay instead of blowing everything up, I found out that they'd be reading or uh, announcing the apology on Talk Heathen and Atheist Experience, but no one told me what the statement was. Was it an apology? Was it about the apology? Was it about me leaving? It turns out they promoted the apology on both shows, which was more than I had demanded, and it's what they had refused to do. So if I had quit on that Thursday, they were going to do more than I asked without bothering to tell me that they were meeting demands. This is either shitty communication or an intentional attempt to set me up uh, if I had actually quit. Why, after threatening to quit if they don't read it, would they refuse to do it, then secretly go and do more? I waited a week before saying, you know, hey, I'm still looking for answers to the questions. And this is when the person I was told to talk to wrote me back saying um, that they can't tell me those things. They won't give me the details. And then they said, I'm not going to play word games with you, Matt. You know very well what I'm talking about if you have further questions and then directed me to a subordinate. Why is this person directing me to a subordinate to answer the policy questions that they had talked to me about? Why are they suggesting that I'm arguing dishonestly and playing word games when all I'm trying to do is find out what the policies are? I legitimately and honestly asked for information and I got accused of word games and possibly accused of threats and intimidation, although they wouldn't answer that question. 
they talked me, others talked me into uh, convincing. I wanted us to staying. I wanted us to apologize, was told we wouldn't. Um, then they went ahead and did it anyway. It seemed like sabotage. Does this organization want me gone is going through my head because I'm tired of saying this is critical and the right thing to do. And they say, no, we're not going to do it. We're not going to give you a reason. And then they go and do it anyway after I threaten to quit. Between the absence of communication on several emails for days or weeks and the terrible tone deaf reply from a member uh, added to the, you know, no, we won't. Yes, we will. Whatever. Um, what am I supposed to think? The truth is nobody knows what's going on. It's as if this org won't say, hey, we're going to do X because saying so would actually commit them to answering questions if it doesn't happen. And you, if you don't have the number of people and the volunteers and COVID has made things even more difficult, this is not just saying, oh, they're all incompetent. That is not what I'm saying. But you can't commit to stuff if you don't have the people to do it. So they just don't. We changed this organization and now the members that have no say in this organization, and I understand that that was necessary. That's way, you know, moving forward, it's, it's more like American atheist model. But my reputation is the one that is the most on the line and yet I'm just being told no, with no reason, with no access to even know who's making decisions, uh, accused of playing word games, uh, labeled as a, a potential enemy of the organization. And now I have the least say in a show where I'm the host, the producer, and the person who gets shit on whenever anybody in the organization does something that might provoke a response. How completely unfair is that? This used to be a participatory organization. That's gone. I can't vote on a new board. I can't be on the board. I wasn't invited to an advisory board. I don't think they've started an advisory board. I don't get replies to emails that I send to the board. I get disrespected and dismissed by an employee and someone else gets to make a decision that impacts my reputation. How can I stay? But I kept trying. Since then, mail that was sent to me at the atheist community got delivered to me, opened by somebody else. And I don't mind that that much, but it's, it's a little concerning. And there's issues with the website. And the Bat Cruise announcement wasn't that good. And we still don't have a full board board 10 months later. And I'm not getting replies to email. And a couple of weeks ago, I filed a complaint against the person who had implicitly accused me of playing word games and arguing dishonestly as both a blatant insult on my character and a direct dereliction of duty because it's their job to answer me and not to blow me off and attack my character and direct me to a subordinate. I was told 30 minutes after sending that email that the issue had been addressed. That's it. There was, you know, hey, I, I talked to the person, it's been addressed, but there was no specifics. And so I followed up and I asked if there was an apology coming. And was I going to get an answer to my original questions about policy? Because that email that I just sent, I got a reply 30 minutes later. I asked, is there an apology coming? Am I getting answers? That email has also never been addressed. Then, two weeks ago, when I was at the building for the live show, I got there early. And during Talk Heathen, I went up to the leadership uh, that was there. And I said, hey, I know you're busy, but between Talk Heathen and Atheist Experience, we really need to talk. And I got a nod. And then they didn't talk to me. They didn't talk to me that whole gap between Talk Heathen and Atheist Experience about the issue. And then when Atheist Experience was over, I said, well, um, we didn't get to talk today. We really need to talk. Can you send me an email and let me know when you have time to talk? I never got a reply to that either. The conclusion from all of this is that the people who are there creating content for the atheist community of Austin are all wonderful volunteers who care about the mission, but they have no say or no control in what's going on. The most they can really do is talk to the production staff and the production staff can then take that to the board. But the production staff also works for the board and has a duty to a financial duty and an obligation to build up content and make the organization better. The organization's communication skills are abysmal. I'm not saying I was any better when I ran it. Maybe I caused part of this problem. But even after hiring a director of communications, there's not much in the way of posts on the website. There's not much interaction. I, I doubt anybody even watching this has any clue what's been going on other than maybe some of you are aware that we're back in the building once a month. At a membership meeting recently, the presentation from one of the directors went on and on about how it's an awesome nonprofit that pays their employees well with great benefits. And that's all true. 
And they spent a couple sentences at the end of their presentation addressing the mission. Interestingly, they've recently posted a new mission statement on the website. I guess it feels like they accomplished something getting the corporate busy work done. So let's spray paint it on the wall of the building because that'll help them think they're on mission when they're not. Or maybe they are. I have multiple emails that went completely unanswered or got, on a couple of occasions, vague lawyerly responses. The corporate layer has hindered communication. And for me, personally, I don't know if about for anybody else, it feels more like the Atheist Corporation of Austin than the Atheist Community of Austin. They ignored direct appeals to talk and to try to resolve this. The board has dwindled to six people, just one more than the number of employees, as far as I can tell. And I feel like I got ghosted. It was even suggested that I could leave amicably and keep working with them when I threatened to quit, like I could be the Paul leaving the Beatles type of thing. Uh, to which I responded that if we're still on the same mission, there's no reason for me to leave. If this is still a place that values my input, there's no reason for me to leave. I can definitely appreciate wanting the organization to not be forced to take action by the big fish threatening to quit. But when it's about trying to get them to do the right thing and they say no, and they dismiss the threat that I'm going to quit, and then ultimately they do more than what I asked, that feels like a setup. That feels like sabotage. The presenters on the ACA shows are volunteers. They should have a say in what happens. They should get responses to their concerns. And when they do get responses, it shouldn't be vague, it has been addressed emails. And when they reach out to say, we need to talk, they shouldn't wait and hear nothing. Whether somebody's trying to avoid confrontation or put a, a nice face on everything, if this is the sort of response that I get, as a two-time president, producer, host, the guy who's been here the longest, what hope does anybody else have? If they'll dismiss my concerns, and then when a couple other people chime in, they'll go ahead and do it, what reason do they have to consider anybody else's? And how much of a say is anybody who's out there putting their name, their face, and their reputation on the line by making statements have when the people behind the scenes we don't have skin in the game quite often, or at least not much, are making decisions that affect that. After announcing my departure, after, despite being a life member, two-time president, longest serving host and producer, they didn't send me a single email. They didn't send me a single text message. They didn't attempt to call me. They disabled my ACA email address. They publicly said something nice about me, while privately said nothing and cut me off despite all of this. How many other life members lost their email address? I hadn't said anything publicly negative about the ACA at all. And honestly, I don't think I still am. I'm telling a story from my perspective of where the problems are and it's administrative and it is a conflict between myself and the ACA. And I'm not speaking for anybody but me. This organization is peopled by great volunteers who are doing great work, who care about the mission. And they should be respected and valued both by the organization and by those of you who watch the content. But this organization deserves no more of my time, no more of my consideration, no more of my input, no more of my content, and I'll be moving on with my life. My mission continues just as before. I'm moving on. I'm doing shows. I might be doing a show on Sundays at 4.30. I'm still deciding. Why give up a time slot that I built over years when I still have work to do. So today, in just seven minutes, go watch Forrest and Dave. They're phenomenal. They are wonderful people. Do not harass them. Do not call the show about this. Do not pester the ACA. Do not send hate mail. Do not do any of the things. This is done. Keep it about the mission. Support me, support them, support both, support neither, whatever you feel is the right thing to do. I did not make this statement to cause damage to anybody or the organization. I want them all to do better, and their communication skills are beyond abysmal. When I sit around crying for months, waiting for anything that feels like the organization I've been a part of to reach out. I've never asked anybody to leave the organization because of any of this or anything. I've never been told, I've never told anybody to support, uh, to not support the organization, but 
Somebody suggested I had, somebody suggested I threatened to leave and take a bunch of people with me, which is absolutely not true. And because they made that accusation, I got labeled an enemy of the organization and everything communication wise deteriorated from there. And it was already abysmal. What I mentioned was that I had talked to some of the people and that they were waiting to see what happened with the organization and with me before they made up their minds about what they were doing. There are great presenters on these shows doing great work. I think Forrest and Dave are on today. They deserve your respect. They deserve your, you to watch. They deserve for you to pay attention. But the leadership of the organization and the people who they've hired who fail to understand what this organization actually was and should be is just wholly inconsistent with what I wish to support and work with. I'd like to be where I'm the one in charge of my reputation, where I'm not being ghosted, disrespected, ignored, and where the mission isn't just a crafted corporate message, but something that we live. Thanks everybody who sat through this entire message. Um, I hope it's taken in the spirit that it's offered. I am serious when I say I am moving on. I don't plan to address this again. I'm not taking questions today. I will probably leave this video up. Um, but the important thing is there are people dedicated to this mission at the ACA. And there are people who are dedicated to this mission outside of the ACA. I am one of them. And while I am now flying solo, I want to thank all of you who participated and contributed for the 17 years that I did this show. And I'm not stopping. I hope to see you all elsewhere. Have a great rest of your day and go watch the Atheist Experience with Forrest and Dave. I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.